two game lead in the division. You're, you know, averaging career highs. You're on pace to beat your over a thousand yards from last year. Like y'all are sitting pretty. Is it just relaxing right now? <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say relaxing, especially off the, the game that we came off of, you know, being Houston, big divisional win. I just, I feel like there's a lot of sense of urgency in the building just because, you know, we know where we're sitting. We know the opportunity at hand and, you know, we got a big game coming up on Monday night. So we want to make sure we're, uh, we're putting our best foot forward on the, on the national spotlight. Now I know the fans are losing their minds. I mean, it's been 12 years, not since 2011 has have the Jags played on Monday night football. You have, of course, but let's get into sort of what the vibes are in the building. Are y'all feeding off of that? Most definitely. I think, uh, you know, we we dug in the meeting the other day, had asked people to raise their hand who in this building had played in Monday night football um, as a Jaguar. And none of the players were able to raise their hand. So that just goes to say that, you know, this is a, a unique opportunity, but also it's a credit to all the hard work and, you know, dedication to kind of turn things around and, you know, put ourselves in position to play in, you know, games like this. So, you know, the better we get, uh, the more successful we are as an organization, we'll have more opportunities like this. So everybody's excited. It was 2011. You were, uh, I believe, a freshman in high school. Yeah, yeah, I'll be the a last freshman. time. What were what was Christian? What was Christian <laughs> Kirk like back in his freshman year of high school? Uh, I was short <laughs> and skinny. Uh, I was probably like five foot four, a buck forty. No, <laughs> you would not look at me and think future NFL player. That's for sure. I mean, Christian, the real question is, what are the cleats going to look like? Oh, I, I definitely have uh, the My Cause, My Cleats. Uh, I'll be wearing um, ones for the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network and uh, in honor of my grandfather who's been battling pancreatic cancer. So that's uh, very near and dear to my heart. So I'll, uh, I'll be out there rocking those. They're purple. So hopefully they'll stick out and, uh, you know, people will be able to notice them. I love that. I mean, I mean, I think everybody noticed from the Texans win. everyone was looking at your footwear. You love sneakers. I do. I do. I love sneakers. Uh, I like to feel like I have some pretty good cleat heat, too. Um, I have uh, my guy, Joe Castro, under fine arts. Shout out to him. That, that keeps me um, pretty right every Sunday. So we always like to come up with something uh, collab going into each and every week. So every, every week I like to come up with something new to, to wear out there. I wonder if those my cosmic cleats are going to give they've got like a little extra touchdown juice to them because it's been a minute week seven I know. listen when you're right you almost had one last, i mean that that what was it, like 57 yard catch and run was ridiculous last week yeah i was i was like a, a toenail away from being <laughs> in the end so it uh that one was tough because i definitely wanted to get in there it has been a while but maybe i've just been waiting for monday night football to get in the end zone did Doug Peterson stand in front with that visor on that pedigree? Did he stand and tell, tell people what your uh, your stat line is on Monday Night Football? No, he did it. He did it. <laughs> I got to call Doug. Let me tell, let me tell, let me, listen, uh, Josh Allen, Trevor, uh, ETN, 172 and two tugs in two games. That's not bad. That's, not bad. that's, that's I'll definitely need to add to that. I would like the two touchdown part. I'd like to make two touchdowns, make it four. But we'll see. There, if, if there's a time and a place to do it, it's definitely on Monday Night Football. And you're at home. Does it feel like a Waffle House game? That would be nice. I mean, it's like the only place that's open that late at night when we get done. So who knows? You might just have to uh, tune into Twitter. The whole team might be up in Waffle House. What kind of an opportunity does this present for Trevor Lawrence, who, of course, balling, y'all are crushing it, but it is a big stage. Yeah, I mean, Trevor just never wavers. So for him, you know, he just doesn't blink. I know he's going to approach it the same way he approaches every every other week. And but I know, you know, one thing about Trevor, he definitely does carry a chip on his shoulder. And, you know, I definitely think that he wants to continue to prove that, you know, he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, which I, of course, 100 percent believe. So uh, he's going to be ready to go. And, and, you know, if he plays anywhere close to how he played last week, yeah, I, I definitely think that, you know, he's going to have a successful night. Do you share that bond with Trevor? Because you're saying he's got a chip on the shoulder. Is that part of what gives you guys some chemistry? 
For sure. And I think a lot of the guys on our team, you know, have that same kind of, you know, chip, if not, uh, you know, this mentality of, you know, wanting to go out and prove, you know, people wrong. You know, you look at guys like Evan, Calvin, you know, even Josh Allen, like our defense, you know, we all want to prove that we should be, you know, recognized for the level of production that there's been. But, you know, that also goes hand in hand because we also understand, too, that, you know, when it comes to the postseason and making that push and whatnot, and when we come, you know, play in these big time games like Monday night, Sunday night, you have to show up and you got to play and you got to prove it. So, you know, we just we take that chip, you know, on our shoulder with us every single day. And just, you know, it, it's what drives us to to be a better football team. Did that playoff game against the Chargers, did it change your team in a way that you still feel right now? 100 percent. Just because, you know, some of the best things and this Doug always talks about is some of the best teams and the best teams are all player ran teams and teams with players that come together and truly like love one another, care about one another and go out. And no matter what, when adversity hits, you know, they got each other's back and they're going to do whatever they can, you know, to make sure the person next to them are at their best. And I think that was a great example of it. You know, when we played the chargers, that's all it was, was just all of us banding together and yeah. having one another's back and, you know, just leveling up our, our level of performance. And so that's what we've done, you know, throughout this year at a more consistent level is just learning how to win and just banding together and just demanding excellence, holding people accountable day in and day out. And from last time I saw you, how has sort of your evolution with your quarterback as far as like just your relationship with Trevor, like what, how, what's that been like since I even saw you at Super Bowl? Yeah, I think it's just, it's just continued to grow, you know, we're we're close in the building and we're very close outside of the building just with, you know, being able to grow that relationship. You know, we talked about it. You know, we play a lot of golf with one another. We're golfing buddies. Um, you know, his wife, my fiance are super close. So we're always going to dinner and vacation and whatnot. So like that, that carries over a lot to what you do on a day to day basis, because just being able to communicate and to trust. And, you know, I know he trusts me to be where I'm supposed to be and to get open on certain plays. And I know he's going to put the ball where it needs to be. And, you know, we're always on the same page. So it definitely goes a long way having that, that relationship. Here's what, I, you know, coach Lou, has got a lot to prove. They got, they got, it's, it's them, right? You got Browning, this big Bengals game, they have to come to town, but that defense is going to try to step up and do whatever they can. Well, whose name, whose name's being mentioned the most, whose name is popping off the film as you prepare for this one on Monday night? Well, I think, you know, they have a lot of guys and it starts with up front, you know, Hendrickson, the guys in the interior, and then, you know, their linebackers, Mike Hilton, their nickel, who's able to, he does a really good job of being able to disguise his blitzes and, you know, they do a lot with him. And so, yeah, they might be a little younger um, on the back end, but, you know, they're competitive. They play with a lot of swagger. And they make plays. And, you know, that's one of the things that that ju jumps off the film, you know, for me when I watch them. So uh, we definitely got to be ready and they're going to be coming in here, you know, trying to prove a point. And, you know, regardless, without Joe or not, um, it's the mm -hmm. NFL. It's hard to win regardless. So, um, you know, we're going to be ready. And I know they will be, too. Cam Taylor Britt breakout years. He is his name being mentioned this week in that, uh, those rooms. No doubt. That's, you know, and, and that was one of those guys, one of the younger guys, I'm pretty sure it's his second year, had a good year last year and this year too has, you know, had some turnovers, you know, he's able to have some interceptions, making plays on the ball um, and got, like I said, a guy with just a high motor and is able to just make plays. And so, like I said, when you go against guys like that, you have to be on your A game. You have to be in the right spots at the right time and make the play when it comes to you. Um, And then, you know, I got to ask you, do you have a defensive player of the year in your locker room? I, hey, I definitely think so. I don't know what everybody else is looking at, but the numbers <laughs> speak for itself. The numbers speak for itself. And at this rate, if he's on the same pace, if he keeps going at the same pace he's going at now, I don't know how you could argue it. Um, and he does it in the biggest games, too. So, I mean, let's just let's, let's speak for itself. 
You just you just called him out. Biggest game maybe of the year. You're the best Christian. Thank you so much for the time. And I hope your grandfather's feeling okay. Thanks, Kay. I appreciate the time. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe right here. Do it now for the latest from Up and Adam.